So let's go ahead and work an example where we compute some of these quantities that we've just defined for random processes. Let's compute the mean function and the correlation function for the following random process. So our random process is x of t, so the same notation we typically use, capital X, to indicate a random quantity, but now we're talking about a random process, so it's of the continuous variable t. And it is equal to a sine of omega ct plus theta. So the random quantities here are the amplitude, so this is a random variable. It has some mean and it has some variance. We'll not be too concerned with the exact type of random variable this is, but we'll, we'll use mu sub a and sigma squared a as needed in the problem if we need them. And then also theta is a random quantity. So theta is a uniform random variable between minus pi and pi. And most importantly, for working this problem as we do the math, we are told, or we'll assume, that the amplitude and phase of the sinusoid, they're random quantities that are independent. So that will come into play as we do the math. So the first thing we want to do is compute the mean function of this random process. So the mean function we denote as mu x of t, because we are dealing with the random process x of t. By definition, that's the expected value of x of t which in this case is the expected value of a sine of omega c t plus theta. That is equal to the expected value of a times the expected value of the sine quantity because a and theta are independent random variables. So typically if we wanted to do, I'm sorry, this expectation right here, we would need the joint probability density for random variables a and theta, but since they are independent, it factors into two expectations and just their product of them. So that's very nice, we can split it up into that. And that be follows because they are independent. Well, what's the expected value of a? Well, the expected value of a is just mu a, so we replaced the expected value of a with mu a, and we're left with just this expected value of the sine quantity. We can rewrite this as follows. To take the expected value of something, I need to take an integral of that thing weighted by the density that I'm going to encounter of the random quantity. Here the random quantity is theta, which is uniform between minus pi and pi. So the density function of the random part is 1 over 2 pi, and I need to integrate that over the entire density, minus pi to pi. So all we've done here is use the definition of expectation for our particular case here. We've written out the integral that we need to work. Well, I can factor out the 2 pi. It's just a constant, so I can bring that outside of the integral. And then what is the integral of sine? It's negative cosine. So that's why the negative symbol, negative sine has popped up there. And then I have cosine omega ct plus theta. And I need to evaluate that at the limits of pi and minus pi. So if I do that, I have to evaluate it at pi and then subtract off at minus pi. And then if I look at this, this has a special form. This looks like form cosine u minus cosine v. Well, that is equal, if you go look at your trig identities, to negative 2 sine of u plus v over 2 times sine of u minus v over 2. So if we use that trig identity here, we can rewrite this as 2 mu a over 2 pi because the negative 2 here canceled with that negative to make it positive. We have a 2. And then what do I need to do? I need to do sine of their sum. So if I take this plus this, the pi is canceled, and I'm left with 2 omega ct. And then I need to multiply by this sine u minus v. So when I take this quantity minus this quantity, the omega c's cancel, and I'm left with just 2 pi. So what is this now? Sine of 2 pi over 2 is just sine of pi, which is 0. So this whole quantity here, I have all this times a 0, so this is equal to 0. So we have computed the mean function for this random process, and it is equal to 0. Let's go ahead and do the correlation function now. So this will be a little bit more complicated because the definition of the correlation function has the expected value of x at time t1 times x at time t2. This is a real valued random process, so we don't worry about the conjugate in the definition. We just need to compute this quantity. So if I actually write this out, for our specific case that we're working, we get this. We get a sine omega c t1 plus theta times a sine omega c t2 plus theta. So I can bring the a's up front to so just be a squared. 
Again, because a and theta are independent, I can split this up into the product of two expectations, just like we did before. And then I'm going to use a little trick right here on the sine quantity part. Really what I have here is something that looks like sine of alpha times sine of beta, which I can rewrite using a trig identity as one-half cosine alpha minus beta plus cosine alpha plus beta. So if I do that here, the first term needs to have the difference of the arguments, so I need to take this minus this. So I end up with this. So the thetas go away, they get subtracted out, and for the next term, I have alpha plus beta, so I have to add these arguments. So I'll end up with two theta, because I got added, and then the sum of the omega c terms goes right here. Okay, so we continue our computation. What is the expected value of this whole thing? right here. Well, instead of the expected value of a sum of things, I'm going to write it as a sum of expected values. So I went ahead and brought the e inside, so to speak. I pulled out the one half, and now I just need to do two expectations. Here's the first one I need to do. It's the expectation of this part, plus the expectation of this part gives me this. So we're just using the fact that the expectation operator is linear. And now I can start asking myself, what are this and this equal to? Well, if we do a similar computation like we did on the first part of the problem, we will actually get zero for this again. And that's something we'll see often. Anytime that we integrate a cosine or a sinusoid of some sort that has a phase that is random over some um, two pi interval, you basically always get zero. So we're not going to work through the details because it's almost identical to the one we just did, but this expectation here is indeed equal to zero. And then what about this right here? This expectation is the expectation of cosine omega c t1 minus t2. Note that there's nothing random here. This is a completely deterministic quantity. The expectation of a deterministic quantity is just the deterministic quantity itself. So what we have is this simplifies to expected value of a squared times just one half cosine omega c t1 minus t2 plus zero. So we don't even write that down. So this is what we get for the correlation function. I can rewrite it like this with cosine omega c, t, omega c tau if I define tau as the difference t1 minus t2. And the reason we're going to do that is because you can probably guess this is a wide sense stationary random process because its mean function is constant, it's zero, and its correlation function is only a function of the time difference t1 minus t2. So when we are done doing our computation and see that the time difference only pops up, there aren't t1s and t1, t2s floating around, just t1 minus t2, we call that tau, and we now know that this is a wide sense stationary random process. Even though we have, haven't really defined that yet, we did define that for random sequences, and we know that's what we're going to get here shortly. So that completes our little computation. We've computed the mean function of the random process and the correlation function of the random process.